Hello, beautiful ladies. Awesome. Well, we are super excited to be here with you today. We have some questions from last week as well with the tech issue. So there's gonna be a lot of great ones that Coach Meg and I are gonna talk through. She's gonna pin the video at the top of our Facebook group. Make sure you're there. Macro tracking and weightlifting for women with an and sign. Macro tracking and weightlifting for women. So the first one I actually want to talk through, it, it was a question from one of our clients on a coaching call today. And I just love it because I think a lot of you are in the same place and wondering the same thing. So I want to dive into this first. So let me actually pull up her metrics too really quick. Basically, she's at the place where she's like, okay, am I at a healthy weight and I just need to grow more muscle or should I keep cutting down? And so Meg... Can you look up uh, what's her height and what's her current weight just to give these gals a frame of reference? And I'm going to dive into um, the explanation, but then do my, oh, well, we know she's 142.4, <laughs> uh, but let me know what her weight is or her height, excuse me. So basically uh, she's been with us, what, four months now? I think. Yeah. So she's at first, her goal was 145. We got to 145. And then she was like, I think I want to keep cutting down. She's very fit. Like she has a gorgeous physique, banging glutes. I'm like, there's a lot of definition in her hamstrings. Quad definition is coming in. Like, I mean, her physique is amazing, but she's like, but there's obviously more tone. She wants more tone, right? There's a little bit of low belly fat. There's a little bit of fat on the back of the leg, things like that. So she's like, should I keep going to take that layer off or should I build? And um, has she given approval to share photos? I haven't asked that yet. Okay. So. We'll share another yeah. time. <laughs> um, five, seven, so. five, seven. Yeah. 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 I figured it was right. Five, seven, five, eight. Yeah. yeah. Usually mm -hmm. about, I think five, eight for most women that we've seen, it's like between 140 and 145 is weight that they feel amazing at. I am 5'8", and I like to be at 145, uh, yeah, 140, about 5'7". So anyway, what we suggested to her was, because we obviously tag team here at Queens of Iron, so uh, clients get multiple trainers on the back end, are just making sure that everything's up to date, lots of eyes on it, things like that. And so what we decided was, hey, you know, we understand you want to have that last bit of fat off, definitely let's bring you down to 142. So that was the next goal, right? Bang, she's hit it. Now we decided, look, let's reverse diet you because in maintenance, she was feeling like, oh, you know, mentally, I'm not sure if I'm ready for maintenance because I don't want to feel fluffy. I'm like, girlfriend, you do not feel fluffy in maintenance. You feel fluffy in surplus. What happens in maintenance is your weight on the scale stays the same with a bit of fluctuation, not very much. But you actually still become a smaller version of yourself. You still get tighter. Measurements still change in the direction you're wanting to much slower about every four weeks or so, but they do change. So you're still very tight in maintenance, but you have more calories to build and develop the muscular foundation, which is what she needs right now. How do we know that? Why would, how do you know, right? If you need to build the muscular foundation. And so a few things that we saw one, you can see her ribs, right? Not in a weird way or like, it's not bad to be able to see that, but there's just not very much muscle in her entire abdomen. So bam, I knew that right away. It was like, okay, we need to build a lot more foundation there. We can't quite see where her legs are at because there's still fat there, right? Low belly hips and thighs are as women, most of us where we hold it. So some stuff is still not showing, right? So we'll be able to better see once that uh, last bit of that layer comes off, but we can see with the upper body, same, she has a lot of space to grow in her back and shoulders and stuff too, but they're pretty jacked. So what we're going to do, we typically, we do certainly a mix of compound lifts and single limb work, A, to really develop and shape the physique, but also to eliminate imbalances, right? We want your body to be so strong, stay injury free, super fit forever. So single limb workouts, like a single leg leg press, a single leg leg extension, a single arm dumbbell shoulder press, right? Things like that. Vital for your strength, for your health and to build and shape your body. What we decided for her was, okay, we need to do a phase or two, which for us is about four weeks. We need to do a phase or two of more compound lifts and less single limb work. 
because that is going to build and develop her abdomen without having to do a bunch of isolated ab work, right? We want to give her more like total strength to really just start to, or not start, to continue to build and enhance her physique. So we're not going to do only compound lifts, but for example, instead of like a dumbbell RDL, we're going to do a barbell RDL. So we're going to give her some bigger lifts. She can lift heavier. And what I told her is I said, every this goes for everybody, but especially in her situation, every single lift you ever do, squeeze your abs so tight that you can feel them fatiguing. Your whole body should be squeezed and in position so tight. So you don't have to do a lot of isolated ab work because your abs are working and getting stronger and growing every single exercise. Mm -hmm. Ab work is great. Don't get me wrong, but it has its place and you don't have to have a freaking ab day. That is not the most efficient or effective use of your time, right? So yeah, so that was pretty cool. So we're going to bring her up to maintenance. Um, I was suggesting, you know, stay in maintenance about four months, really develop the body, develop the habits in maintenance. Because ladies, when you feel amazing in your skin, self-discipline and maintenance is a totally different ball game than self-discipline in a deficit when you're going to hit a goal. It's a totally different world, right? Each level you get to in this journey is a totally different world. You learn new habits, new things come to light, and it's amazing. It's so fun. Maintenance is so fun. But it takes time to develop the habits to really have that long-term successful life without having to track macros. And you get to stay fit and shredded all the time, right? Maybe not super shredded all the time, but <laughs> definitely very fit all the time. So, yeah, so we're going to uh, put her in maintenance for about four months and then reassess. I, I'm like look, you might not want to go back to a deficit because you're building so much mass. You are going to shed fat in maintenance, right? Like you might not want to go to a deficit. So let's stay in maintenance for four months, reassess, see how you feel. So we're really excited to see how her body develops and progresses. And I love that she had the awareness to say, I think this is a healthy weight for me. I don't want to keep dropping. How do I go about this tone? It's like, oh, it's yeah. build time, baby. Yeah, <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> and ladies, if you have, love it. Yep, yeah, I'm here. Hello. Um, if you guys have questions, we will absolutely prioritize your questions. So please put them in the comments. And as long as we can see them on our end, we will definitely go in and answer them. All right, beautiful. Okay, Meg, do you want to go into the second uh, question number two from Miss S? -E -S? Yes. Um, so the question is, would the serving size info be based on cooked weight or before cooking? And they're talking about uh, pasta. She's saying 125 grams of uncooked pasta looks like a very large portion, which yes, that is a lot. <laughs> way um, too much. <laughs> yeah, it's way, way, way too much. Um, because when you cook the pasta, it expands, but a really easy way to track this kind of stuff, because we get this question a lot. Do I track raw? Do I track cooked? Do I track shelled? Do I track unshelled? <laughs> we had this whole discussion about pistachios the other day. Um, edamame. So, <laughs> edamame, yeah. Or, yeah, shelled pistachios. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, track it how you're eating it. Um, so that's how I do it. Um, and you can type in, in if you're using my fitness file, you just try type cooked pasta and it'll pop up. And then you can weigh it. Uh, because especially with pasta, it expands so much. And so normally what they say on the package does say uncooked. And so that can kind of mess with your head a little bit. Um, yeah. So always just look up uh, how you're eating it, like shelled versus unshelled. Yeah. You're not going to eat the shell. Or I think I had one client ask, do I count the peel on the banana? And I said, please only count what you're eating. If you want to eat the peel, I guess count it. But I, I mean, most or, you know, like on the orange. So just. Yeah count what you eat. <laughs> yep. Just count what you eat. And so if the nutrition label doesn't make sense, right? Cause the nutrition label was uncooked. When she says, look it up, it's like, type it in the search bar in your food diary. Yeah. Cooked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. The same goes for chicken breast. Eat cooked totally. chicken breast. Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter how you track it. Yeah. You track it how you weigh it. Yeah. Yeah. Cooked or uncooked. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Ashley J. She said, curious as to whether you guys change your calories on rest days and training days. Um, there are multiple ways to skin the cat. If that works for you, fab. Not needed though, right? It's like 
do what you enjoy most. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you enjoy, wonderful. We typically do flatline macros, which means the macros are the same every day for consistency and lifestyle habits. Right? We're just building them a lifestyle. We're building them all these beautiful habits. Women find it way easier to just be steady all week instead of having changes. And I mean, you know, it's like you get used to eating a certain amount. And then the next day, if you're like trying to eat a different amount, it's like, wait, then how do I balance and space th these meals? Like, it's just an extra variable that's not really needed. So whatever works for you. Yeah. Cool. Um, I would love to answer Ariana, if that's okay with you. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, yeah. I'm interested yeah. too, because I, I like these kind of questions. Yeah, so Ariana says, weight gain tips for someone with a high metabolism. I love this question. What a great problem, problem right? To have. Yeah. <laughs> so typically this is an ectomorph, right? It's hard to gain weight, very thin. Um, some have high muscle mass, some don't. And so basically you need to go in a surplus, right? There's so many uh, tips I can share for being in a surplus. First, you want to aim for about one pound, one pound gain per month, a whole month, right? Because we don't want to gain a bunch of excess fat. You want to be gaining muscle mass. So one pound per month is beautiful. We've seen so much success with that. There is a little bit of a fluffy feeling, but it's only short term, right? It's only temporary. So make sure that you're in the proper surplus percentage or, you know, proper surplus to only be gaining about one pound per month. Track your metrics, right? Track your weight. Make sure there's no big jumps. There should Everything should be super slow and super steady. Again, so you're not gaining too much fat, right? We want to just be gaining the muscle mass. Now, I would say personally, and it depends on the woman, but typically we do like, I like to do about a 16 to 20 week surplus, okay? Let's go about 16 to 20 weeks. That's like four to five pounds. Then go back to maintenance, then reassess. For some women, they can shed that little excess fat in maintenance. So they actually never even have to go to a deficit, which is amazing. Some women do need to go into a slight deficit. We usually do less of a deficit for people who have done a surplus to a maintenance because they don't have that much fat, right? Because the first thing that we do is make sure all the fat is off and they're loving their body. And now it's just building. For Ariana, it sounds like you just need to build, right? So it's making sure you're eating enough carbohydrate, especially as an ectomorph, you can handle so many carbs and you need a lot of carbs. So make sure you get enough carbohydrates for your body, for your lifestyle, for your training demands. And then, like I said, focus on about one pound per month for about four to five months, then drop to maintenance, stay there for a few months and then reassess how you feel. That's a fun place to be. It's, yeah. it's time consuming, but oh my gosh. It's like, I'm thinking of the word whiteboard, but it's like a blank slate. I'm like, you get to build and craft like whatever you want. Like that's a very cool place to be. It feels like Jennifer. Oh, that's why I'm so excited when she's talking. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm like we're potters, you know, and now the clay <laughs> is ready to be built. Like, <laughs> it's so exciting because of what it does for the woman. Jennifer said this morning, she said, I never thought I would get to this point. I'm like, Yes, I'm like, <laughs> that is the goal. It's very cool, you guys. When you yeah. really dial in what your body needs and know how to build and shape, it's like oh, peace and confidence like explode out of your mind. It's just amazing. It's amazing. Okay, cool. Next. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and share, but I've, okay. I've had a few uh, clients like this. So I'm going to have a partial hyster hysterectomy. Has anyone had this issue losing weight after, uh, or do you lose weight once the surgery was done? Okay. So for every single client we've had who, who has had a hysterectomy or a partial hysterectomy, it's the same thing as menopause. It's the same thing as everybody else. You just need the right macros for your body. A lot of times you're going, you're not going to be able to exercise or do certain things for a certain amount of time. No problem. We need to dial in your macros, start building the habits with your nutrition and your lifestyle. You can totally lose the weight find what works for you in terms of uh, like what your body needs. So we'll find what works for you, right? Increase energy. Like you can make a lot of progress while allowing for the proper recovery time mm -hmm. and the right macros aid in recovery. So that's good. Yeah. Okay, great. How about I'll start, I'll just read all the questions. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do the next two questions together. Um, so basically it's about being sore, right? In your workout. And so it's like, 
if I'm not sore, am I getting, am I even doing the work or am I doing the right thing? And um, my take, and then go ahead and add on it, Meg, is I would really make sure that you're in proper form, because if you're not using the right form, you're not going to be developing the right muscles, mm -hmm. which is probably a problem for a lot, right? Because if you don't have someone seeing your lifts or you're not properly trained in how to properly lift, I mean, you're doing your best, right? But it's like, how, you don't know what you don't know, right? So that's really the first thing I would dial in is, are you in exact proper form, doing the right technique, having the mind muscle connection? I'm thinking of like a lat pull down, right? Having the mind muscle connection. We've had clients come in, they say, I'm doing a lap pull down and I just feel it on my arms. It's like, yeah, because you're only using your arms, right? We need to focus on really using those back muscles or they'll never develop. You can do lap pull downs till the cows come home. Mm -hmm. But until you start working your back and actually learning to activate, you'll never feel it there. That's the first thing I'll say. The second thing I'll say is like soreness doesn't necessarily indicate an amazing workout. There are definitely times where maybe you're not super sore. Um, but again, I'm like dial in your technique. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I you have, want? Yeah, I have a, so especially with our programming, we like to change it every four to six weeks. And so typically in the beginning, like the first week when you're learning this stuff, I notice I'm more sore in the beginning, right? Because you're trying to learn the things. And then as you progress and you get PRs and stuff, at the end, I'm not necessarily as sore, but I'm still getting a heck of a really good workout in, but I've got everything really dialed in. And so that's another reason why, why we do change phases, because we like to give our body different stimuluses um, and switch it up because your body gets used to the same oh same oh so I would question what your um, um, routine looks like as well totally yeah that's absolutely so true yep we got to shock the nervous system yeah. right it's like change 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 if you're doing the same thing you'll plateau yeah, yeah. I mean it just is what it is yeah. okay cool um all right so very simple question uh, Alice and P, one thing I haven't been able to curb myself from is the coffee creamer in my iced coffee. I use sugar-free coffee mate, you know, low macros, but it's not a great option. Really processed. It's just oil. Any suggestions that won't alter my macros? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put it this in is what I put in my coffee and it's great. <laughs> I just use the sugar-free syrups that are like zero calories. With oh, okay, there you go. Milk, and that's no, there's no oil in there at all. Yeah. Um, and I have that every day. And then I also add protein drink in there on top of it. Pumpkin yeah. spice is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the protein shake in the coffee is, I mean, it's, it's the winner. Really yeah. Good. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's go down to Jean about creatine. Okay. Okay. Creatine is super effective. We did a creatine research review. If you type in the Facebook group search bar creatine research review, you'll see it. It's yep. super effective. It can mess with women mentally, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're fluffy. There's a lot more water attention. The scale goes up. Measurements go up. Women freak out. So it's like it works for some. It's not the best for others because of the mental aspect. So assess where you're at and take it very slow. Mm -hmm. Start very slow. Great. Okay. Um, Miss Ashley, she's like, is there a supplement I can take or something else I can do? I lift, I lift five days a week. She's ungodly sore all the time and it affects her sleep and other things. She drinks 80 to hundred ounces of water per day. Her body is like, should I just not do anymore? I love it. I don't want to give it up. I stretch before and after every time. Cause I know it's important throughout the day too. So my, Sorry, were you going to say something? No, a fly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, the, gosh, there's so many questions I would ask. How's mm -hmm. your food quality? Yep. The first thing I would say is, how is your food quality? Are you eating enough protein? Are you eating enough carbohydrates, right? Are you eating enough uh, fat, everything? Uh, fat as well. Fiber. With, <laughs> with that, so fat is more, um, like hormone regulation and yeah, things like okay. that. Carbs are energy, recovery, mm -hmm. protein, recovery, right? Muscle growth, things like that. And so the first thing I would make sure is that you're on the right macros because right now your nutrition is not meeting your training demands. Mm -hmm. And our nutrition should be meeting our training demands and our lifestyle mm -hmm. demands. Your body is telling you that your nutrition is not supporting your life, your uh, training demands, excuse me. So that's the first thing I would change. Uh, bring your water up. Let's do minimum of 100 ounces. Aim for 120. 
And uh, the next thing I would ask is stress. How, how are your stress levels? If they're high, obviously that hinders recovery, that can hinder sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're also not recovering. So the first thing Ash, I would tackle is your macros. Make sure you have the right macros. You may just need to eat more too. Maybe. I like what she says. She goes heavy too. And so just a reminder, like you could change your rep scheme as well and go lighter. Um, yeah. You know, uh, just try like, all right, have you been doing the same thing? You know, switch it up, yeah. take a break, stuff like that as well. Yeah, that's, that's, and it actually makes me think of too, it's like maybe do a deload week, take mm -hmm. one week to deload and Definitely. see how your body feels after that, right? Yeah. Maybe you were over training, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of factors. Yeah, that's a good question. Great. All right, Miss Lisa G. Hi, ladies. I have a loaded question. <laughs> I've been weightlifting since January of 2023. She lifts four days a week, but got really burnt out in addition to her high labor job. I cut down to three times a week, but was still feeling exhausted, moody, stressed, and tired all the time. I decided to try lifting one day on, two days off. So now she feels way stronger and well rested. She's like, my question is, has anyone tried this type of split? Does it work for you? I do push pull legs, all the things. So I looked at a calendar. I said, how many days a month are you training? And it's 10, right? So it's about two and a quarter training days per week. It's going to be extremely challenging to see any growth because two days a week you can maintain probably, but you're not really going to see any growth. My So I just want to make sure you're educated on that just so you have all the information. But again, I would ask, does your nutrition meet your training and lifestyle demands? Because it might just be that your body needs way more food, right? Mm -hmm. Food is energy. Remember, ladies, food is energy. We need energy for performance in terms of actual energy and food energy for performance. So it may just be that you needed way, way more food, exhausted, moody, tired. To me, I'm like, let's give this woman some more food. <laughs> Yeah. Macros. And yeah. sleep. How's your sleep? Are you sleeping? <laughs> Are you getting enough of that? Totally. Yeah. And the, the thing is too, it's like, don't feel bad. You know, I, I feel kind of bad being like, sorry, you can't grow, but the volume just isn't there. Right. But it's like, this is a season in your life. You know, maybe this is just how it is. And I mean, so proud of you. So great that you are training those days. You have found something that's good for your body and you're still getting in the gym. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, but let's look at nutrition first. I did want to add like one thing because, mm -hmm. um, so high labor, maybe your manual labor is what I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, and so maybe you are getting a lot of that. So maybe you're almost getting too much on some muscles, you know, also just looking at that. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, my uh, husband takes bands with him to work sometimes when he knows he doesn't have time. So just like over your lunch, if you just, you know, you can get a heck of a good workout with a band. You can grow with bands and you can take yeah. them anywhere. So, you know, if it's really important to you, um, that's something else you could look into as well. Well, for her, it's not time. It's recovery. Oh, exhaustion. <laughs> yeah. She's putting in the work. Yeah, she's totally kicking butt at the gym. It's awesome. Her body. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's so true. It's like, no excuses. Make it happen. Control your controllables. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So um, let's actually skip that one because it said like 1,700 grams of carb. I'm like, whoa. There's a lot going on there. Okay. So Mary L M she says perhaps a bit out of the normal scope of conversation, which we can talk about yeah. this. She yeah. says, um, I'm relatively new to heavy weightlifting. I'm a novice as far as that's concerned, but not to exercise. I have breast implants, which we both do as well. That's why I was making that yeah. joke uh, last December. And she's heard from some, you should not do a chest press. Can anyone speak to this? We can definitely speak to this. We have tons of clients too with implants. I just had mine replaced end of May this year. Um, I'm not doing push-ups yet, but I'm definitely bench pressing. I can feel it a little bit on the scar tissue, but, and mine are over the muscle, not under. First things first is talk to your surgeon. Your surgeon is going to know best. Thankfully, my surgeon is our client. And so she totally understood, you know, the training and stuff like that. And she just gave me a time frame. She actually said eight weeks, and then you can train absolutely like normal. I waited until probably 
two weeks ago. It's October, June, July, August, September. I waited four months until I've really been doing chest. And I'm, again, I'm still not doing push-ups yet. I'm doing pretty light uh, bench and I'm not doing pull-ups yet, but I have started to go heavier on that pull down. So give it time how your body feels. Um, Definitely talk to your surgeon, like I said, but every single one of our clients who have had breast implants in the middle of the program and before the program do chest. We just had to adjust workouts around when they were ready. Mm -hmm. And also just like listen to your body. If something feels weird or something feels yeah. off, you know, just ask your doctor. <laughs> That's what they're there for. <laughs> totally. And you can, well, depends on not about nutrition not yeah about no program, about your implant but... sorry <laughs> if it feels weird <laughs> i'm just making a joke don't, yeah. call, your, don't call your plastic surgeon <laughs> what should my necklace be <laughs> the other thing you can do is like megan said earlier is increase your reps and so your weight is lighter mm -hmm. yeah do 15 reps instead of eight right for example cool I felt that was a way shorter QA than I thought. Ladies, any questions that you have on your mind right now? Let me, I'm gonna talk about something really quick while you think of any questions. If you do, please share them. You can also send us a message. We'll chat. We're here to help you. We are here to help you in every possible way we can. So I wanna talk about habits, right? When we do something that is fast, we're gonna race in this program to get a prize, or we're gonna do this quick thing, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, just here. Are you really building habits? Some people maybe, but a lot of people are not. And so it's never gonna take you anywhere except for an extremely short amount of time, right? So find what is impacting you most. And for a lot of you, you're already working out, but you're not seeing the results you want. And so the answer is dialed in nutrition and the right program design, right? The right workouts and lifestyle coaching, the habits. But the lowest hanging fruit or the area that's probably causing you the most issues, I'm like, there's so many things I want to say in my brain. I'm like, which one really would be the lowest? I think for most of you, it's nutrition, right? Really finding not only the right macros, but it's consistency with those macros and meal balancing and timing, because it's not just about filling your macros. It's about making sure that 80% of your foods are unprocessed, wholesome foods, right? Fruits and vegetables, high fiber, plant-based carbohydrates, you know, quality sources of protein, things like that. Mm -hmm space throughout your day so your body has enough fuel and energy to thrive again for lifestyle and for training demands yeah yeah look at this excuse me i'm post-menopausal fitness enthusiast my issue is nutrition totally and for a lot of you ladies with menopause it's like what used to work for me doesn't work anymore mm -hmm. what we have found 100 percent of the time like half our clientele is either perimenopausal or post-menopause right they're they've there's so many, we work with women from ages like 30, well, actually to, I think 73, but really like uh, probably 30 to 55, I think mostly. And so we go through this a lot and a hundred percent of the time it's the right macros for you and consistency over time. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Your thoughts on intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting was designed to restrict eating right? So it was designed for people who overeat. And so it was like, okay, only eat in this amount of time. So basically you're physically consuming less calories. So our clients don't need it, right? We teach them lifestyle. We teach them tools, things like that. Um, I think fasting 12 hours is great because it helps get rid of free radicals. It helps detox your body. But I think if you're using it as a fat loss tool, it may be fine. It, it may be okay to use, but is that in is that putting a band-aid over the habit that needs to change? Or is there a different way? Right. So those are the questions I would ask around it. Because again, you want to set your, yourself up for success for the rest of your life. So it's like, let's get to the root of every habit and behavior. So you don't even have to rely on that if you don't want to, right? You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but if you like it, it's okay. Yeah. That's what I would say about it. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Good question. Beautiful. Um, I think it lost my chain of thought. So with the lowest hanging fruit, so basically just take one bite of the elephant at a time. Yeah. Right? Like, um, actually I'll talk to Stacy really quick. Uh, 
she's Sierra is her client success trainer. Man, she's been putting in so much work and you know, it, it's been baby steps at first. It was like, she couldn't even eat hundred grams of protein. She's vegetarian. She could not even eat hundred grams of protein. So it's like, okay, let's start at 80. Let's get 200. Now she's at 125. She's like, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Now she's getting really compliant. Bam. Figured out protein. That took like two months, if I'm remembering correctly. Now we're working on getting up her fruits and veggies. We're not like do all your macros and all your produce and everything all at once. Like that's impossible, right? So it's like, okay, we're just going to tackle one thing at a time. You're going to do your weightlifting program. So you're going to develop all these beautiful muscles while we develop habit and nutrition one step at a time. Now she's got protein. Now we're moving to more wholesome versions of protein, not like shakes and bars and stuff like that. We're doing more like tofu and just, you know, vegan and vegetarian sources of protein for her. And then um, more fruits and veggies, higher fiber. Then I'm sure there's many other habits, but going one step at a time, she is setting her entire life up for success because these habits will never go unlearned because I have found women who really achieve the body that they love, they feel strong, they feel empowered, they're healthy, they get it. Like everything is in place. You never go back. You never go back. You will never let yourself go back because it just feels way too good. Yep. You will never go back. Yeah. So she's really setting herself up for life because she's not in a hurry. She's here for the process. She's here for the total life change and it will serve her. Well, yeah. I mean, look at her now, like already going from 80 to 125 grams of protein is it's insane. It's insane. Right? That's, that's yeah. a really, it's a lot. That's like what, 50% yeah. increase or something. Yeah. Like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love this question. Am I hogging this, these questions? Go for it. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Every woman is so different. I, I feel like it's nails on a chalkboard when people say 30, 40, 30, it's like, you don't even know. I mean, that's so relative on number of calories because for example, I'm eating like 2,400 calories. If I did 30, 40, 30, that would be an insane amount of protein and not efficient, right? Or productive for my body. Someone who's on, well, lower, it makes a little bit more sense, but we do it by gram. We do X amount of grams of protein per kilogram body mass ranges, you know, carb, fat, but we develop and train females as athletes, right? So again, Queens of Iron, we have a few specialties. It's nutrition, right? Taking women through the entire losing the fat, building to maintenance, maintaining and maintenance, either going into surplus or weaning them off of macros. So that's one thing that we do is the whole entire process that you need to achieve this for life. So that's one. The second one is physique shaping. We take basically the world of bodybuilding and a super healthy fit lifestyle and we sandwich it together so you can feel amazing in your body, but you're at a really healthy, sustainable body fat percentage and you have great habits, which is our third specialty, right? The lifestyle coaching and the process and developing that. And so, the yeah, it's just, we go, we go by... Graham. We've shared, so current research with protein is about 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram body mass. Carbohydrate is two to eight grams of carb per kilogram body mass. And fat, depending on the woman, is about 0.8 to 1.5 grams of fat per kilogram body mass. But mm -hmm. there are a billion uh, person or uh, variables. Yeah. How do you know? Okay. A few reasons. What are her energy levels? What are her stress levels? What's her body type? How is her body performing in the gym? How is her body responding to check-ins, right? And macros and stuff like that. Um, how's her recovery? Are her menstrual cycles still regular and healthy? How are her cravings? Things like that. So it's, I'm not trying to be vague or anything that there's just so many variables that, I mean, okay, this is, I heard, um, someone that we train under for education stuff, they said, um, what did she say? The Australian strength coach and Hattie Boydell, they said something like, um, it's like the right macros, the right lifting routine. So the right macros plus the right lifting routine plus consistency times 10 years is right. <laughs> the dream physique. It was yeah. something like that. Yeah, for sure. And, um, I think ladies trying to figure it out on their own is crazy. Like personally, not even including all the trainers and the combined knowledge, but personally, 
I probably have over 15,000 hours of training, freaking training. So it's like trying to figure it out on your own. It's putting so much stress and pressure on yourself. That it's like, buy your time back, buy the trial and error back because you could accomplish something in six months that maybe be taking you six years because you're trying to decipher so much information. I was telling someone, um, she goes, okay, well, how do I keep uh, shaping my body? Can you just tell me how to do it really quick? And then I'll keep doing it on your own. It's like, that's like asking your tax professional the ins and outs of every tiny little detail they do to just like tell you really quick. And then you'll go do it on your own. It's so unrealistic. Or like asking your brain surgeon, can you just let me know how to do this? And I'm not exaggerating. There's so much, you guys, it is an entire profession, right? So it's just crazy. We're, I mean, we're going to talk about this in the nutrition mastery. I think that's you, Meg. Yeah, it's like, dude, it's wild. And research is ever changing. We just yeah, that's what I was going to say. We know because we do research. We it's it's not just we made this up. So yeah. <laughs> we, we we do the research. <laughs> and we need to stay up with the research. Yeah. Like our fat range ever so slightly, but it just changed because it's like new research is out and we, you need to be following that. Right. And following it based on what you want for us, we're about female physique development, female performance, like athletes, right. And living a really healthy, happy lifestyle. Other trainers and influencers and people out there like that, they might be great, but their intent and focus is totally different. It might just be getting off the couch, right. It might be functional. It might be sports specific. It might be gen pop, just exercising. Everyone is so different. So if you, if you're like, everyone says something different, it's like, well, their intended audience is different and their niche is different, things like that. So yeah, it's a lot. Uh, Here's a good question. How would you and Meg recommend adding in electrolytes for women that eat predominantly a whole food diet and don't season their food healthily? Um, I just got the liquid IV from Costco. I think that's been good. Like there's I like that as well. The electrolyte powders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so uh-huh. adding some salt to like, not a lot like pink salt to your food is most of the time you get enough through what you eat. If you add, you know, just a little bit. Um, I think sometimes people overthink this. I mean, if you're going to get a heck of a workout in and you know that you need some help, just the um, uh, element or whatever additive is fine. Um, but I don't think this is something you, you need to overthink too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, she, so she's saying, yeah, she doesn't season her food heavily. Yeah. So yeah, I would probably say just add it, see yeah. how you feel, right. See if yeah. you feel different, but it's not like it's going to harm you to add a black no. pot, you know? Yeah. My kid drinks it a little bit too. I'm like, your pee is a little bit yellow, son. Come here. <laughs> Yeah. And you can do like half too. Cause sometimes I'll just do half cause it's too sweet for me. Um, so yeah, it's trial yeah. and error. <laughs> cool. Great questions. You guys, I hope that this is really helpful. You know, we, we always want to be helpful, but we're, we also want to be really straightforward. And, uh, because I think that's helpful, right? Instead of being like, Oh no, you got it. You can do it. It's like, no, we want what's best for you. Right. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you fit and loving your skin because, struggling with your body and feeling like crap about it is the worst. We've both been there. That's why we do what we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it affects your whole life. So we're really here to help you. Yeah. Great ladies. Um, well, a couple of things. So we have next week on Tuesday, we're going to have the nutrition mastery and we're just going to help guide you through the holidays, right? Make sure you're set for success. Make sure you have a good plan of action find any holes in your plan so we can help bridge the gap, right? So you can just have peace, enjoy your friends and family, enjoy the food with balance, Mm -hmm. still be making progress. And it's really cultivating healthy habits. So if you want more info, you can type in the comments invite, Uh, but it's Tuesday, the 24th at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be live in our Facebook group, Macro Tracking and Weightlifting for Women. We're really excited for that. And then we'll also be giving away 100 of the four-week DIY lifting programs. More information will come out. Um, it is DIY, right? It's not, There's no coaching or anything like that. So we are making it free for the first 500. We already have almost 400 on the waiting list. So if you want that, make sure to write like DIY lifting or something. Uh, we'll send... We'll, Send you a DM, sorry. Yeah. And then we just need your email to give you a login. Basically, it's on an app. 
the reason we want to give this to you guys is because we want to show you what physique style lifting looks and feels like, mm -hmm. because we can say it till we're blue in the face, but I think that you really need to experience it. And so we just want to gift that to you and say, Hey, look at this. Mm -hmm. you know and it's really fun so we're very excited for them and we'll launch that for the first hundred uh probably next week we're gonna i'll do like some zoom calls with you guys and i'm looking forward to it it'll be a good time we're excited to get your feedback as well yeah. cool anything else Meg? you want to share or talk about i don't think so i'm just excited for next week now it's gonna be so fun yeah, agreed. Ladies, last thing I'll leave you with, I know I just posted about this, but if you have questions, um, please ask. So calories affect your weight. Macros affect your body composition, right? It's not just about calories. The right macros are so important for life, for energy, for health, and for body composition. It's not a diet when they're done correctly. It's a tool, right? Just like tracking your finances, you need the right plan in action for you and your goals. And that's going to look different than every single other person on the entire planet. So a calculator can get you so far, but having that specialized approach is like, I made it. I'm here. It is possible. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's a beautiful process. If you really commit to going through the whole process, it's like, oh, your life will change so much. And I know a lot of you already experienced that for what you've already accomplished. You do so much and it's beautiful, the foundation you've built. So keep yeah. up the great work and we're here to help anytime. Yeah. Cool. All right, ladies, have a beautiful day and we'll see you later.